Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. I've been in the nuclear industry for about 30 years. Uh, of those 30 years, approximately 20 years of it has been uh, as an operations instructor. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate some of the techniques that I use uh, in a classroom environment to, uh, to share knowledge uh, with a student. Now, first of all, um, this is a simulation. Uh, there are obviously no students present. One of the techniques that I use uh, uh, regularly is to involve the students by uh, the use of questioning. I, I will ask a lot of uh, uh, directed questions at individuals as well as, uh, as open questions uh, broadcast to the entire class. I think it's important for the student to feel comfortable with the instructor, uh, kind of put them at ease. So I'll use a little bit of humor. Uh, we'll keep it a relaxed environment. Uh, I'm not a big stickler for formality in the classroom. Uh, I'm more interested in the students learning what they're there to learn. Uh, in addition to that, one of the other things that I'll do is I'll try to take complex topics and simplify it. And the way I attempt to do this is by trying to involve as many of the students' senses in a learning environment as I can. What I mean by that is it, the more I can get them to, to, to feel, to taste, to smell, to use all of their senses uh, and, and, and connect that to the topic at hand, uh, the more efficient their learning will be. Uh, so that, again, that's another technique that I try to use. The reason I bring that up now is because I'm going to try to demonstrate a little bit of what it is that I mean by that. Um, I plan on discussing uh, Doppler broadening in the uranium-238. Uh, this is uh, our fuel temperature coefficient. It's a negative uh, reactivity input into the life cycle of the neutron so uh, but it's a concept it's a concept that many students have a hard time getting a grasp on so before we begin our discussion of uh, Doppler broadening let's first talk about temperature a little bit because this does involve the temperature changes in the fuel um, Temperature. Well, what is temperature? Temperature uh, really is a measure of a molecular vibration. Essentially what happens if, if we take a typical uh, thermometer, mercury th thermometer, uh, for example. Uh, we have a tube, a thin tube, and in that tube uh, is a mercury liquid. Now, when we take this mercury liquid contained, constrained within this tube, and we place it in contact with another material to be sampled, the material will begin to transfer its energy uh, to the mercury contained within the tube. Now what's physically taking place is as this energy, this heat energy is transferred from the surrounding uh, liquid uh, into the into the mercury tube, is a, individual molecules of mercury, particularly those that are first that are nearest to the sample level will begin to vibrate. This vibration will increase as the amount of energy being transferred increases. Now as this molecule of mercury begins to vibrate, it begins to strike against adjoining molecules of mercury, imparting that kinetic energy to the adjoining molecules. Those molecules will in turn begin to impart their energy to adjoining molecules. Eventually, the kinetic energy is transferred throughout the mercury, and all of the mercury begins, the molecules begin to vibrate um, in relation to the temperature, to the, to the amount of heat that's being transferred to the mercury. As, the, as these molecules vibrate, they obviously can't sit as close to each other as they used to. They require more space between them. That's seen as an expansion of the fluid, the mercury within the tube. Because the mercury is constrained by the diameter of the tube, what we see is a rising level within the, the tube as the mercury rises due to the expansion required because of the additional vibration of each molecule of mercury within that tube. That's a general idea of what's going on with temperature. It's a measure of the molecular vibration in the material. 
Now, when it comes to uranium-238, a similar thing takes place. First, let's talk about a uranium-238 atom. Well, let's assume that my fist is a uranium-238 atom. And we'll assume that it's in th thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. Uh, and, and in our case, we'll say, well, we have no vibration really taking place. All right. Now, this uranium-238 atom has a particular... Um, affinity for for neutrons of a particular energy level. Now, it's a little bit beyond what we're going to discuss, but we um, uh, we could talk about uh, 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 mechanics, uh, how there are particular energy states um, that um, that the uranium-238 would have a preference for absor uh, absorption. Uh, in our case, there's one particular energy level that, uh, that uranium-238 has a very high uh, absorption probability, and that's a 7 eV neutron. So let's assume we've got our uranium-238. Uh, it has no molecular vibration at the current time, and a 7 eV neutron comes into its vicinity. There's a very high probability that that uranium-238 will absorb that neutron, that 7 eV neutron, all right, and that neutron will then be lost uh, from the fission process. It won't be able to uh, initiate a fission of uranium-235. Okay. Now, if a 5 eV neutron comes in, although there is some probability that, yes, it could be absorbed by the uranium-238, that probability is substantially less than, than it is for a 7 eV neutron. Therefore, the 5 eV neutron would just simply pass by the uranium-238 and not be absorbed. If we have a neutron with energy greater than 7 eV, let's say a 9 eV or a 10 eV neutron, the similar thing takes place. It will simply uh, pass uh, the uranium-238 atom and won't be absorbed. Now, what happens as I start to heat the uranium-238 is I start to get vibration of that uranium-238 atom. Just like what was happening with the mercury inside the uh, uh, thermometer tube. The uranium-238 atom begins to vibrate as I add more heat to it. The more heat I add, the more it will vibrate. Now, let's take the case where we have a 7 eV neutron, and it's coming in the vicinity of this uranium-238 atom. If the uranium-238 atom happens to be in a neutral position at that point, okay, the 7 eV neutron will most likely be absorbed. All right. Now, if the uranium-238 atom happens to be vibrating towards the neutron, the 7 eV neutron as it comes in, the, the combined energy, if you will, let's say that uranium-238 was vibrating towards the neutron at 2 eV worth of energy, and this neutron is coming in at 7 eV. If it's coming towards it with 2 eV, and the neutron is worth 7, that's a total of 9 eV. 9 eV uh, has a low probability of being absorbed by the uranium-238. So even though the neutron is 7 eV, the combined energy is 9, therefore that 7 eV neutron will most likely not be absorbed by the uranium-238. Hmm. So what would happen then is if we were to be looking at uh, a, a plot of the, uh, of the absorption probability all right, to neutron energy, we would have a very high peak at uh, 7 eV. Okay? When we start to impart energy, because that 7 eV neutron is not as likely to be absorbed because of the combined effect of the 2 eV um, of, of molecular vibration from the uranium-238 and the 7 eV neutron making 9, what would happen is the peak would actually reduce for probability of absorption of a 7 eV neutron. However, in addition to that, let's say that this uranium-238 atom is vibrating towards the neutron at 2 eV, as laid in our previous example, but let's say that instead of a 7 eV neutron, now we have a 5 eV neutron in the vicinity. The 5 eV neutron, the 2 eV energy accelerating towards the neutron makes a total of 7 eV. So even though normally the 5 eV neutron would pass by, because the combined energies now are 7 eV, there's a very high probability that 5 eV neutron will be absorbed in the uranium-238. Let's say we have a, a neutron that comes in that's more than 7 eV. Let's say it's coming in at 9 eV, but it's coming in at 9 eV as the uranium-238 uh, atom is vibrating away at 2 eV. 
If it's coming at 9 EV and the, and the atom is vibrating away at 2 EV, the combined is 7 EV. So now even the 9 EV atom can be absorbed, or neutron, sorry, can be absorbed in the uranium-238. So combined, what we have is we have a reduction in the peak, but we have what's called a broadening of the peak as well. And this is what's called the Doppler broadening effect. Basically what happens is as we heat uranium-238, the absolute maximum absorption probability for the 70 V neutron decreases, but we also have a broader energy range of absorption of neutrons uh, because of this vibration of the uranium-238 atom. That finishes this demonstration, uh, but I think you can see that uh, that um, I've attempted to try to bring into the real world uh, as much as possible uh, and simplify what is sometimes seen as a very complex topic. Thank you, and I appreciate uh, your consideration uh, for employment uh, in South Korea. Thanks again.